Mm, yum, 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 yum. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Lubkowitz, and I love the smell of coffee in the morning. I am a molecular biology professor at St. Michael's College, and uh, I'm making videos for my students in molecular genetics. And I got a couple of emails from some alumni who want us to know what's the connection between COVID-19 and loss of taste or loss of smell, which is a really, really fascinating question, actually. And the concern has been uh, because both smell and taste involve neurons, there's been the worry that COVID-19 can actually infect um, the nervous system, which would be uh, really, really bad news. So I did some time digging around the literature to figure out what we know about COVID-19 and its ability to cause a loss of smell or cause a loss of taste, and what's the mechanism. And so without any further ado, let's get right to it. Give me a second to share my screen, um, as I always do. Do, 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 do. All right. So as you guys know, all good um, searches start by pouring, going into the literature. And um, being a brand new field, there's not a lot out there right now looking at the mechanism between COVID-19 and the loss of smell, which is, in case you're wondering, called anosmia. I did find one paper that was just posted on March 28th of this year um, by a preprint website run by Cold Spring Harbor. Now here's what you want to know. This is an article that's been submitted for publication. It has not gone all the way through peer review yet, so you have to just a caveat there. I will say this, this research group is um, at Harvard and is a really prolific and well-respected research group. I looked at the paper and um, I buy their model. Okay, so what did they show exactly? So we're gonna be looking at how, how smell works. Let's start off with that. Um, we have, I love the smell of coffee in the morning. So when you have a, um, volatile molecules go into the nose, they're going to go into the nasal cavity where they will then bind to these olfactory receptors. These receptors are, are neurons, in fact, they go to the olfactory bulb and then information goes off to the brain where you say, mm, yum, 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 yum. All right, we're gonna zoom in and look at some of the cells that are actually involved in this process right here. And it starts off with odor molecules, so now we're inside the nose. Okay, so let me, let me back up for a second. So we're inside the nose, odor molecules come in, and they're going to bind to these cilia right here. These cilia have the receptors and they're actually part of these neurons. So these green cells that are running longitudinally here, these are all neurons that are perceiving whatever odors are coming in and they're being held in place by these orange support cells. Okay, so the orange cells are just supporting these cilia. These are the neurons. And then that information is gonna get propagated down through those neurons and then eventually it'll leave this neuron, get passed on to another um, neuron where it goes as information to the brain or you say, I love the smell of coffee. Now these researchers know, in fact, um, we all now know that for COVID-19 to get into a cell, it actually has to uh, bind to the ACE2 receptor. So this is from the cover of Science last week, which you may have seen in the last Love Goes Live episode. This is an actual 3D image of, or a cartoon um, image of what the 3D molecule, the 3D ACE2 receptor looks like. And this is COVID-19, this is the spike protein that then binds to this. Here's what you want to remember. A cell can only get infected by COVID-19 if it has this protein. If it has the ACE2 receptor, COVID-19 can infect it. If it does not have that receptor, as far as scientists know, COVID-19 cannot infect it. So this group from Harvard wanted to ask the question, if we were to look at all the cells that are found here um, in the nose that play a role in smell, which of them have the ACE2 receptor. And what they found was, and this is sort of surprising, they found, first of all, these support cells here have the, have the ACE2 receptor. And then these blue cells down here have them. Now these blue cells are actually called basal stem cells, and their role is just to replenish anything up here that gets damaged. Notice, notice, here's the big piece, notice what doesn't have the ACE2 receptor. None of these neurons in here had the ACE2 receptor. That suggests that COVID-19 is not able to infect neurons, but in actuality is affecting smell by infecting these support cells here, which help hold the cilia up in place, and by infecting these basal stem cells. All right, so being good scientists, they proposed a mechanism. Once again, this is not a proven mechanism at this point. This is their working model, so it's testable. And so what they think happens is when these support cells get infected by COVID-19, once again, they can be infected because they have the ACE2 receptor that disrupts the cilia. Now, they do have evidence for that based upon coronavirus studies in rodents. So when other coronaviruses infect rodents olfactory systems, it does, does disrupt the cilia. That, of course, will pre prevent the odor molecules from binding. No odor molecules bind. 
That means that the neurons don't get activated. That means no information goes to the brain. And once again, you can't smell the coffee. All right. So why does it persist? So in their model, they said, all right, so this first infection here is going to damage these cells. These cells would normally be replenished and repaired by these stem cells. But these stem cells themselves have been sort of taken out of action, probably temporarily. As a result, their ability to replenish them stems to replenish this population and restore your ability to smell is greatly hampered. Okay, let me go back. Let me stop sharing. So there's a lot that's not known, but that's a pretty good mechanism, I think, for this point. Uh, what they don't know yet is, is it the loss of smell that's causing the loss of taste? Because as we all know, taste and smell are tightly linked. Or can COVID-19 also infect taste buds? I'm still waiting for that paper to come out. Uh, that's all I have for you today. This is Mark Lepquist from St. Michael's College. Oh, 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 my kids want me to say this. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. They don't think I can reach 250 subscribers. I, actually, I don't think I can either. But I'm going to wager something against them that I can. So as always, rising from the ashes like the phoenix. And remember, please, let crisis bring out the best in you. And I'm now going to, going to go smell my coffee and enjoy it.